Hello, and welcome to the train station. Hello, everybody. It is so good to be here once again, Wednesday night, 7 o'clock, reading Cinders. This is a chicken Cinderella, if you couldn't tell. <laughs> Make sure you say hi or drop a note so I know that you're there so I can give you a shout out, shout out. Um, yeah, so welcome to the tray station. Um, again, I can't see who's here unless you say something. So please drop a line. You're like me today. I'm a chicken, <laughs> obviously. Like my headpiece. Isn't that crazy? Crazy. Good times. We have my co-host. Coco. Hi, Molly and Walker. Thank you so much. This one I couldn't wait to do. I've never been a chicken before. <laughs> and I have some chicken jokes. I am living large today. And I have my Incredibles outfit on because I'm feeling incredible as a chicken. <laughs> anyway, hello. Who are my other two people that are here? Itchy. Ellen! Hello, Ellen! How are you? Ellen fam. Do you guys know that you guys are top fans? That's how you're coming out. Top fans. Well, all right. That's what I'm talking about. Thank you! Cinders. A chicken Cinderella. Don't get better than that. A chicken Cinderella. <laughs> A chicken Cinderella. Oh, good times. All right. So... Let's get started since it's 7.03 and, you know, you're waiting. All right. So a chicken Cinderella. And then I'll say my jokes after. So this book is really, really sweet. Uh, this is by Jan Brett, who the librarian in Lowell actually told me about. She has some great stories and she illustrates so beautifully. She'll do a regular picture and then like around the picture and the border is like another picture within a picture. Look at the inside of this book. How pretty. Whoop. Isn't that gorge? It's gorge. I just love it so much. All right. So, a chicken Cinderella. Jan Barrett. Good stuff. And I, again, got this from Pollard Library in Lowell. I love that library. I use it a lot. That one, Lawrence, and Haverhill are my three libraries I use. Okay. Snow on the outside, feathered friends on the inside, Every evening, Tasha took oats to little cinders and the other chickens in the old tower. This evening, a blizzard was raging, and Tasha had to struggle through the wind and snow to get there. Look at this picture. How beautiful. Isn't that beautiful? Should I live there? <laughs> Gorge. Inside... The old biddy, Largessa, and her daughters, Pecky and Bossy, pushed Cinders out of the way and ate up the oats before Cinders had any. She hid under the wood stove until Tasha lifted her gently onto her lap and fed her. After all the chickens were cared for, Tasha tried to leave, but snow had piled up against the door. Her father was traveling and wouldn't be home until the next day, so she curled up near the warm stove. The picture's great. So itchy. As soon as Tasha fell asleep, a warm glow filled the room, and her hen house came to life. The chickens clucked and gossiped until Largessa, the big know-it-all, pranced out of the shadows with an invitation to the ball. Darlings, she trilled, it will be more than a ball. Prince Cockerell is sure to be looking for a princess bride. She winked and poked Pecky and Bossy. Time to get ready, she cackled with delight. <laughs> Rude. Poor Cinders. Cinders! Lay my eggs and shine my slippers, Pecky ordered. And bring warm water to scrub my toes, Bossy bellowed. Do me first, Largessa ordered. Trim my tail feathers and fetch my jewelry box. 
Simmons didn't know where to start. The primping and fluffing, shining and smoothing seemed to go on for hours. Would she ever have time to get herself ready for the ball? What would she wear? She began to wonder if she could even go. Poor Simmons. The snow stopped and the moon shone a path through the window. The chickens dressed in all their finery flew off to the ice palace all except cinders. She looked down at her wet feathers and frayed wingtips and started to cry. Suddenly, the log in the stove flared. Into the light flew a beautiful silky hen cinders had never seen before. I'm here to get you ready for the ball, the silky promised, and she brushed cinders with her wand. Oh, look at how good she is. What a fluff master. Cinders found herself wearing a splendid silver seraphine dress. When ashes had covered her feathers, a silver sheen sparkled. On her feet were the loveliest crystal slippers, and in a basket nearby, one of her white eggs glowed like the silvery sheen of her dress. Next, the silky rolled out a pumpkin. She called to the pigeons on the rafters and pulled some mice out from under the floorboard bird, boards. And lastly, she summoned three ducks. And then she brushed them all with her wand. Oh, how oh cool. The pumpkin became a fine sleigh. The pigeons, elegant footmen, and the mice in matching livery drove the troika of ducks in all gilt harnesses. As they glided away through the wintry glade toward the ice palace, the silky called out to, Swind to cinders, My magic will only work until midnight. When the ice clock chimes twelve, everything will be as before. Oh, the pressure! If I was Cinderella, I totally would have been embarrassed because I'm always late. <laughs> That'd be awful. That's it. At the palace, the ball was beginning. Largessa pushed her daughters to the front of the line and gave Pecky a shove. The prince, ever the gentleman, caught her before she fell. She looked up into his eyes, swooning the way Largessa had taught her. And once all the guests were announced, Pecky and Bossy stayed close to the prince, keeping, away, keeping him away from the pretty young pullets. The door opened one more time, and everyone looked to see who the last guest could be. Who do you think it's going to be? Cinders stepped daintily into the ballroom. Her eyes sparkling, her head held high. No one recognized the little hen. Prince Cockerell went forward to meet his beautiful mystery guest. He could not take his eyes off her. Oh, look at their clothing. They look gorge. Oh, this page open. The silky peeked through the window. Prince Cockerel was leading cinders onto the dance floor. <gasps> this book opens up now. I'll show you in a second. And then, the one at a time. The prince never left her for a moment. When he crowed, she cooed. He was the handsome prince. She, the dazzling princess. The pullets, the hens, the cockles, and the roosters all wondered who the graceful hen could be as she swirled around to the music. Look at all the guests. How cute. Let's see if I can fit it on the screen. Isn't that cute the way that opens up? It's difficult to maneuver it. That was the only page that does that. 
The hour grew late. Dark clouds moved in and covered the moon. The ice clock began to chime. One, two, three, four. Cinders turned away and flew out the door. Five, six, seven, eight. She fluttered against the gate, losing her crystal slipper. Nine, ten, eleven, twelve. The little gray hen felt herself growing lighter as her silver dress turned into her old frock. She was covered in ashes just like before. The spell was broken. She flew home and settled on her nest under the stove before the flock returned. Ah, how awful. The next morning, the chickens twittered and clocked, wondering who the beautiful mystery guest was and why she had flown away. Suddenly, they heard the sound of bugles and light from the stove lit up in the tower. In came the prince carrying a crystal slipper and Cinder's egg. Nestled in its basket, I will travel to the ends of the earth until I find the one who wears this slipper and lays silvery eggs. She is my true love crowed Prince Cockerel, the princess of my heart. <laughs> All the hens lined up to try on the slipper. Big feet, long-toed feet, duck feet, they all tried, but no one foot fit into the dainty little slipper. When Peggy jammed her foot in, her toes buckled under, and she went off in a huff. Bossy's feathered foot was so large that she tried to hide it by pulling the slipper along with her big toenail. <laughs> Look at all these hens. Everybody wants to be the princess. Good luck. Her <laughs> big toenail. The prince looked in each of the nesting boxes. He saw brown eggs, tinted eggs, speckled eggs, but not one white silvery egg. As he was turning to leave, a luminous glow and a pile of straw under the stove caught his eye. Then he saw cinders and beckoned her out in front of her nest. She looked up at the prince and he stared into her eyes of his lady love. He knelt down and slipped the crystal slipper onto her foot. The prince had found his princess at last. Ah, don't you love true love? Outside, bells rang as a sleigh arrived at the tower. Tasha's father flung open the door, awakening his sleeping daughter. I thought I'd find you in here among your feathered friends, Tasha, he said revealing a handsome cockerel with a sweep of his arm. He will be an elegant addition to our flock, he exclaimed. He can live on the top floor with everything he needs and maybe some company as well. Perhaps a pretty hen you've been taking special care of? <laughs> Cinders! And from that day forward, the elegant Prince Cockerel and Princess Cinderella ruled the roost. And Tasha, especially on moonlit nights, tucked in her own bed, was sure that she heard the sound of music and dancing coming from the tower. Isn't that gorge? And that's the end. Isn't that beautiful? Cinders. I thought this book was super cute. Jan Brett. She does a bunch of uh, different books and all of the illustrations are so beautiful. Anyway. Okay, let me see who is here. Hello, Skyla and Deshaun and Daisy and Rhea. The makeup is amazing, but it's sort of freaking me out. <laughs> but I love the headpiece. Hi, Michelle. Hi, Annette. Thank you. I know, isn't the head feet awesome? All as it is, is construction paper. Isn't it great? I just took a piece of paper and I glued and I stapled it together and then stapled to my headband and then I just cut these red things. Five minutes. 
Guys, construction paper is key. Always have construction paper, especially if you have kids. The kids that I babysit, they had to do a um, Dr. Seuss day. And we made complete costumes out of construction paper. It was awesome. I love construction paper. I think it's awesome. I'm so glad you love the book, Molly. That's awesome. Walker, thanks for coming again, you little cutie. Top fan. Top fan. I haven't forgotten about Pete the Cat, by the way. All right. So I have some chicken jokes that I will share. I just have to look them up. Uh, let's see. I'm trying to see if I remember any. Um, my nephew, Deshaun, wanted me to tell the, why did the chicken cross the park to get to the other slide? <laughs> I don't want to do the road one, but I like the park one. That's kind of funny. Uh, let's see. I have a few. And feel free, if you have one, I will say it out loud. Let's see. I have, uh, let's see. How does a chicken tell time? One o'clock, two o'clock, three o'clock, four. <laughs> That's kind of cute. Oh. Why do chickens hate people? Because they beat eggs. <laughs> I mean, are they really funny? No. But, you know, <laughs> they're like, you know, corny funny. You make me laugh. Uh, let me see. Oh, what's a chicken's favorite instrument? That's right. Anything with drumsticks. Boom! Ah, oh, good stuff. What do chickens order for dessert? Coop cakes, of course. <laughs> oh my God, why did the chicken disappoint his mother? Because he wasn't all he was cracked up to be. <laughs> why is it easy for chicks to talk? Because talk is cheap. <laughs> Get it? Cheap. Like, C-H-E-E-P, that should be the least favorite instrument. I know, right? Oh, what did the sick chicken say? I have the people pox. <laughs> I have the people pox. <laughs> what do you call a rooster who wakes you up at the same time every morning? An alarm clock. <laughs> uh, let's see. I did that one. No. Let's see. Oh, what day do chickens hate most? Friday. <laughs> That's funny. And one more. What do you get if a chicken lays an egg on top of a bale of hay? An egg roll. Because it's going to roll right off. Okay. That's all the jokes I have. Oh no, one more. What what do you call a mischievous egg? A practical yogurt. <laughs> Those are kind of funny. Those are cute. That joke was excellent. Thank you so much. Little funny, little funny jokes, little funny things, little funny things. So I hope everyone is doing well and staying safe and all that good stuff. Um we have my wrap, which I will do for you. Um, I like to keep it open just in case, but I have been practicing it, you know, in between teaching. So it's not like a ton of time, but I'm pretty good with it. I just like my little security until I'm, you know, 100. Uh, let's see. All right, so I have... Hello, my friends. Hello, my friends. And welcome to the Tray Station. Choo! Choo! It's an imaginary place, so come and have a look. In every single corner, there's an awesome book. I'll read it to you while I'm dressed up weird. I may be a princess, or sometimes have a beard. I may be a bunny, or even an ox, sometimes a doggy, maybe a fox. Whatever the look, I'll be sure to thrive as I try to make you read it and eventually come alive. My goal is to want to make you read more, maybe find a book that you really adore. So don't be shy, come on in, cause everybody's welcome at the tree station. <laughs> I didn't even look. Hey, yay for me. I didn't even look. Woo, woo. Um, 
Guys, thank you so much for coming out to the train station. Uh, I'm not sure what we're going to do next week as of yet. Um, I have a couple of options. Um, oh, there's so many good books. Again, if you have any suggestions, please feel free to drop a line and I will do my best to get that. Love the rep. I know, isn't it so cute? I made it up in it. So awesome. <laughs> so awesome. Annette is an author, guys. The Magic Rabbit. Oh, remember we did that story a couple of weeks ago? She's phenomenal. Um, yeah, so you guys are in the presence of a real live author. It's amazing. I love people that do stuff for kids because it's just great. Thank you, Skyla. I know I didn't even look. Isn't that awesome? And thank you for your hearts, Ellen. So that's it. That's all I have. I did my rap. I did my jokes. I read my story. I'm checking in. So remember, 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 like and share. I'm working on getting a review button. <laughs> I'm having a really difficult time, um, but I am working on it. I, I would love it if people could just go on my page, on the Trade Station page, and just leave a random review. Feel free. I think that you should be able to post, I'm pretty sure. Thank you so much, Michelle. Um, yeah, do that. That would be great. Tell your friends, post and share and love it and like it and do whatever you're going to do to keep it thriving and have people coming. That would be great. And that's it, my friends. So listen, I'm going to get a going. Um, would you like to hear the rap one more time? Watch, I'll do it again and I won't do it right. I'm going to do it again anyway. Are you ready? Okay. Okay. Hello, my friends. Hello, my friends. And welcome to the Tray Station. Choo, choo. It's an imaginary place. Come and have a look. In every single corner, there's an awesome book. I'll read it to you while I'm dressed up weird. I may be a princess. I'll sometimes have a beard. I may be a bunny or even an ox. Maybe a doggy. Sometimes a fox. Whatever the look, I'll be sure to thrive as I try to make your reading adventure come alive. My goal is to want to make you read more. Maybe find a book that you really adore. So don't be shy. Come on in. Everybody's welcome at the train station. That's my favorite part. When I go, everybody. That's my favorite part. I don't know why, but it is. What are you going to do? All right, guys. Well, listen. This was fun. This was fun. I was going to say something, but I'm not. Because I'm not on my regular page. It's the station so thank you so much you guys cluck instead of you guys rock have a phenomenal night thank you ellen and grayson and tristan and jacques if you're there and skyla and day day and raya and daisy and anthony and renee everybody <laughs> uh and lisa and raymond and Ellen, and Michelle, and uh, Anne, Molly, and Walker, Annette. Uh, did I get everybody? I think I did. Yes, I did. Guys, thank you guys so much for coming every week. It really means a lot to me. There's four of you here, and you guys are all like, you show up as top fans. I really appreciate it. I really, really do. And the Trey Station appreciates it. And Coco appreciates it. Appreciates it. He's my he's my uh my partner. I was gonna put a, a beak on him, but I didn't. I thought that was mean, so I didn't. <laughs> Poor Coco. He's like, hi, I'm only fourteen. Leave me alone. Anyway, all right, guys, listen. Have a great night. Stay safe, and I will see you next week, same time, same place at the tree station. You're welcome. Thank you so much for coming, guys. Take care and have a good night. Bye. Cluckety cluck cluck.